Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn about how to read and write data with Python, specifically focusing on reading data into pandas data frames, and then writing data from data frames into comma separated values files that can then be opened with, say, a spreadsheet program. The pandas library comes equipped with several data reading functions that you can use to read data from common file types into Python in, straight into a data frame. But before we jump into learning how to read data, we're actually going to spend a brief moment going over Python's working directory and file paths so you can figure out where the data you're trying to load into Python is located so you can pass in the appropriate file path to access that data. So if you want to check your current working directory within Python, you can do that with the OS module. So to do that, we can say import OS and then use this function os.get current working directory or CWD. And when we call this, it'll show us where we are in our current file system. And we can use that to help us find what we're looking for. So since I'm on this Kaggle cloud environment, I'm currently in the Kaggle slash working folder. If the data files you want to load in are not in the current working directory, then to load them, you're going to have to figure out what directory they're in and supply that to whatever data reading functions you're using. For instance, in this Kaggle environment, the data files are not actually in the working directory. So we have to figure out what directory that is so that we know what, where to read the files from. So I'll show how I would do that in this case, but your situation will depend on your file system. So here we're going to say os.chdir, that's changing the directory to Kaggle. So basically right now we're in Kaggle working. We're gonna go one step up and go just back to the Kaggle directory. So we'll be out of the working directory after this. And again, we'll check the directory. So we'll run that and now we're just in the Kaggle directory. And you can list the files and folders within a directory by using this os.list directory or listdir. And that can show us what folders we have access to so we can help find where our data files are. So I'll run that on Kaggle and scroll down. And we can see within the Kaggle folder here, we have three things. We have a lib folder, an input folder, and a working folder. Well, the working folder is where we just came from, and that's not where the data files were. They're actually in the input file. So why don't we put input and rerun lister on that and see what's in the input folder. So we can see there are two more folders in input, a draft 2015 folder and a Titanic folder. So let's go ahead and do this again on the Titanic folder and see what's in there. Now we can see within the Titanic folder, there are a few actual data files. There is a train.csv, a gender submission.csv and a test.csv. So these are data files that we can potentially load into our Python environment. So to start off, we're going to learn how to read comma separated values and tab separated values files that those are CSV and TSV files. That is one of the most common, simple flat file data formats that you'll find. And those types of data formats can actually be read in and edited and saved to using spreadsheet programs like Excel. So depending on how you choose to encode your save files from one of those programs, they might actually be in one of these formats instead of their own proprietary format. But all a comma separated values or tab separated values file is, is just a bunch of text in a plain text file where there are data values separated by some delimiter. In the case of comma separated values, there is a comma between all the data values. And for tab separated values, there is tabs between all of the different data values. So to read a comma separated values file into pandas, you want to use the pandas.readcsv function. We'll show how to do that here. So we're going to first import pandas, import pandas as pd, and then to read in the file, we're going to say pd.read underscore csv. That is the data reading function. And since this function specifically is made for reading CSV, we don't even have to provide any special arguments to say what delimiter we want to use. It knows it's going to be common separated values. So all we have to do now is path, pass in the file path to the file we want to load. So now we supply the file path that we found earlier, input slash titanic slash train.csv. 
This will load in the training data set for the Titanic disaster competition and save it in this variable. And then we'll just check the first six rows with dot head six to see that we successfully loaded in the data and just to take a little look at it. Now, if we were reading in a tab separated values file instead of CSV, we could do that too, but we need to use a different function. For that, we want to use pd.read table. That is a more general data reading function that lets you specify delimiters. It will actually read tab separated values files properly by default because the default delimiter is tabs for this function. But if you need to read in data separated by other things, you could do that with this function as well. You just need to specify a sep argument for the separator. So say you had data that was separated for some reason by like hyphens or some other character that wasn't commas or tabs, you could potentially do that using this pd.readTable function. And note that if you're using some other data reading function for some reason and you needed to pass in tabs as the delimiter to like a separator argument to to write out a tab character, you wanna type backslash T within quotes, that will get you the tab character. So next we'll learn how to read data from Excel files. Microsoft Excel is a ubiquitous enterprise spreadsheet software program. So you're likely to find data stored in Excel format sometimes, even though Excel is capable of storing things in CSV. And since Excel is so popular, Pandas actually also has a function for reading in Excel directly. You don't need any kind of extra package. Pandas can do it on its own. So to do that, we use the pd.readExcel function. We'll show how to do it here. We're going to read in the draft data that was in that other folder we discovered earlier. So to do it, we're going to save a new variable draft for our data, pd.readExcel. The first thing you want to pass in, again, is the file path where the data is. So this is the file path to the Excel file. And then you also need to specify what sheet you want to read the data from. Excel files can have many different worksheets within a workbook. So you have to direct it to which sheet you're reading from. So in this case, we're going to say sheet name equals draft 2015. I made this file up for this lesson, so I happen to know that it has a sheet called this. Um, if you were doing this yourself, you'd have to perhaps go into your Excel file to make sure you were selecting the right sheet. So again, we'll run this to read the data in and call .head on it to make sure that we actually got it to work and we can see some data. You can see this is some NBA draft data from several years ago. It was ranking the different prospects from that year. Now I'll talk a little bit about reading data from the web. We're not actually going to go through code for doing this because with data on the web, it can come in so many different formats. It would be somewhat difficult to try to cover all the different ways you could go about reading data on the web. I will say that in general, the easiest way to load data from the web into Python is to first download the data set in a form that's easy to read in using one of the functions we already discussed earlier. So most websites, if they have data in the form of tables, will allow you to download it as a CSV or Excel file. That's very common. Figure out the file path or just put it in your current working directory and then use one of the reading functions that we already covered. If you're running Python locally, you can actually read data in from the clipboard by copy and pasting. So to do that, you would say select a bunch of cells on an, a website that has a table and do control C to copy it. And then you can actually use the pd.readclipboard function, and that will try to read data in that you have stored on the clipboard. This can be somewhat finicky depending on the formats of things that you're copying from. And I can't actually show how to do that right now because I'm in Kaggle's online kernel environment. So if I copy anything to my clipboard, that's not something that the online environment is gonna have access to, but just know that is something you can do. And alternatively, if you're not getting good formatting from that, one other thing you could try is to copy data and then paste it into a spreadsheet program, so like Excel, and then you can say clean up the data a bit and make sure that it looks decent, and then you could save it either as a CSV or an Excel file and then read it in from that using the functions we talked about earlier. Pandas also comes with a function called read underscore HTML. 
This will allow you to read data in directly from web pages. You do need the HTML5 lib package to use this. Nested data structures like HTML, JSON, and XML are found quite a bit on the web, but it's not something that you can easily read directly into a pandas data frame. It's often something that requires a lot more work and using other packages outside of pandas to process and kind of traverse the tree of data to get what you want. But we're not going to be covering how to read in those sorts of data types in this lesson. Each one has its own quirks and would kind of warrant its own unique lesson using the appropriate libraries to deal with it. So to close out this lesson, we'll learn how to write data using pandas. And we're just going to learn how to write data to CSV. That's kind of the most common and easiest data format to work with. So that is what we're going to look at. So all you have to do to write data to CSV in pandas is use the to CSV function. So you take an ex existing data frame. Right now we have a data frame stored as draft. So we take our data frame and say draft and use the dot to CSV method. And then within the parentheses, you just pass in the file path you want to save it to. If you want to save it to the current working directory, you don't actually need a file path. You just give the file a name. So we're going to call this draftsaved.csv. And after we do that, we're just going to call lister on the directory we're in so that we can confirm that the current directory does have a new file in it after we write. So we'll run that and we can see that in addition to these other folders we already knew were in here, we now have the file that we wrote, draftsave.csv. In the case of this Kaggle kernel environment, if we were working on machine learning competitions on Kaggle, we could save our prediction results to CSV just like this. And then after we save and run our kernel, we could then use it to submit our results to the competition. As you can see, Pandas makes it quite easy to read and write data using the Pandas library if you're dealing with common data formats. Databases and nested data formats are a little bit trickier to work with and may require using other packages outside of the ones we've learned about. But since Python is the most popular language for doing data analytics, it has libraries that can deal with just about any data format you could think of. So just know that if you ever have to work with a data type that you haven't encountered before and you don't know how to work with it, you should be able to find a Python library that can help you load it in and parse it just by doing a bit of research online and say reading the documentation for a new package. Now that we know how to read data into Python, we're almost ready to start learning how to do data analysis. But before we do that, we're going to learn about some basic Python programming constructs and how to write our own custom functions in Python. That will allow us to write our own code and perform tasks that might not be easy to do using built-in functions. So in the next lesson, we're going to start learning the basics of writing our own code in Python with a lesson on control flow which will include using if and else logic as well as for and while loops in order to get the computer to run code in the way we want it to. If you found this video useful, you can drop a like or hit subscribe, and I will see you again next time.